Oh, hey. <laughs> you again. Um, <laughs> okay, so since we're all here in this forest, um, I thought I would answer this question that is not uncommon. Um, it's sad when I hear it, but basically this woman's going, hey, uh, I, I'm assuming her husband just heard the love and respect message for the first time because she said, now whenever we have any disagreement, he's like, you're being disrespectful. You're being disrespectful. And she's like, how am I supposed to bring something up to him if I feel like every response I get uh, is you're being disrespectful and that is like super de-energizing and I'm sorry <laughs> and I think I you know I talked with my dad about this and one of the things that is going to be up to you to figure out is to discern what kind of man your husband is is he someone who literally has just heard this for the first time he's never really been able to articulate how he feels when he feels like you guys are at odd odd so now he is verbalizing this to basically open up to you and be like this is how I'm feeling or is he some dude who really is manipulative and is trying to just shut you down and not engage you at all? And you're gonna, you're gonna have to figure out that. Um, I definitely had a guy that I dated once when I wasn't super familiar with the love and respect message do that to me. Everything I did, well, you're being disrespectful to me right now. And I so like was trying to understand this that I finally went to my dad and I was like, wait, he said this is disrespectful, is that? <laughs> my dad was like, no, that's you setting boundaries. That's you saying no to something that he, you know, and, and so it was just really interesting. And I'm so thankful that I had my dad to talk through that with, um, because for the most part, this is verbiage that men, it resonates with them. They, they do shut down when they feel disrespected, but there are, there are men who can manipulate it. So then what do we do? we have to discern. And I think one of the things, one of the ways to kind of gauge that is going, okay, was my husband super articulate before um, he started using this verbiage? And so if your husband's someone that really wasn't able to express himself and now he is, then then you're thinking, okay, well, we, maybe we can have a conversation about this. However, if your husband's like a clinical psychologist and now everything he's saying to you is you're being disrespectful, then yeah, he's hitting you over the head. Like he is someone who should be able to articulate and talk about how he's feeling, but he's just using this to shut you down and so my guess is it's probably like you seemed really sweet in your email of just going I'm trying to figure this out and I think he probably is too and one of the ways you can unpack it is just approaching him and going you know how can we address things that we differ on without me discouraging you because I think you should be able to trust my heart that I'm not trying to be disrespectful are we able to disagree about anything and then see what he says. And if he continues to not know how to articulate himself, be like, we're, you know, we're in this together. Maybe even use like, you know, some type of metaphor of like, we're allies in this. And it seems like when I approach life and I just disagree with you about anything, it's like you turn on me for treason and shoot me in the head just because I differ from you. Is there something that I can do to communicate to you in a way that doesn't feel disrespectful, but at the same time have a differing opinion? Sometimes I feel like guys who have now been given this verbiage are just saying, I feel disrespected, dis disrespected and that's just their way of shutting down because they don't want to drag out. Maybe you guys sometimes have two or three hour long conversations. I think if you have a differing opinion from him and, you, and you've already addressed the thing where you go, how can I disagree with you without you feeling disrespected? See what he says. And then say, I have something that I just want to bring up with you and I don't want to do it in a way that will make you feel disrespected or shut down. Can we just talk about this for 15 minutes? Sometimes if they know there's going to be a cap on this thing, then they don't feel like the next three hours are going to be a battle. If you use that terminology of like, we're in this together. I'm not trying to commit treason. Please don't shoot me in the head. Like, can we just have a mature conversation about this as teammates for 15 minutes and then stick to that 15 minutes? I would guess that a good man who's just trying to express himself but isn't doing it super well will engage you for that, will not be put on the defensive, and hopefully over time he'll be able to express himself and trust your heart um, in your marriage and your ultimate partnership. On the next Ask Joy, Joy tries desperately to get a sandwich named after her. Keyword, desperately. Usually at Fried Egg, I'm in love, which is the best food cart in Portland. I like to show you when I pop the egg, but because I've given instructions for my egg to always be very, very runny, sometimes what happens is the egg has already yoked all over the place. <laughs> I'm not yoking. <laughs> Can't stop. Ask for the joy. I'm really trying to get this thing started. It's not on the menu. We've updated it. It has sausage, tomato, avocado, grilled onions, which is what melts the cheese, that's key, Havarti cheese, aioli, and their house-made sausage, which is the best thing in the world. And the aioli's house-made too. 
Now, if you come and you get this sandwich, it will be good, but it won't be great. When will it get great? When you put aardvark hot sauce on it. Trust me, people, this is necessary.